Everyone wants their giant superhero property. Prime Video has Invincible and the Boys. Disney Plus, of course, has WandaVision, Falcon and Winter Soldier, and a ton more. And HBO Max, of course, has the entire DC Universe. But what does Netflix have? Well, looks like they got Mark Miller's Jupiter's Legacy. And we got season one to review and a non-spoiler review right now. Everybody. Welcome back to a brand new Netflix review. Today I'm going to be discussing Jupiter's Legacy. This is of course season one of the brand new superhero show coming from the minds of Mark Miller. If you know that comic book creator, he's done stuff like Kick-Ass, Kingsman. I'm a big fan of his. I've never personally dove into Jupiter's Legacy too much. Read a couple comics, but never too much. So this is very much a new property for me. And I'm excited to be here discussing this with you guys because I think a lot of you guys are probably going to really enjoy this. And some of you might not. And that's what's going to be a great discussion down below in the comment section. So make sure to comment down below. As well as making sure to hit that like and subscribe. And if you enjoy early movie reviews, TV reviews, just gaming. Or in general, you're just a geek like me. I am the Wolf of Geek Street. And I'm so happy to have you here along for the ride. Jupiter's Legacy. It's about the first generation of superheroes who has kept the world safe for nearly a century. Now their children must live up to their legacy in an epic drama that spans decades and navigates the dynamics of family, power, and loyalty. Now, once again. I was quite excited for this. I really like this cast. I really overall like the concept. But here's my thing. I don't think the series was perfect by any means. I think there was actually quite a few cons that I actually cannot get into because they are kind of spoilerish. So I'm going to tiptoe around them a bit. But um, there is a lot of good stuff in here. But there's also like for everything that's great. There's something that drags the whole entire series down. And, you know, it's tough because when I start with reviews, I love to start with the pros. This is something that I actually really want to touch on the cons because I feel like the cons are the things that just get right out of the way. So let's start with that. And for me, the biggest con is there's a ton of flashbacks in here. Now, in the comics, if there's a ton of flashbacks, that's cool. Comic wise, it works, but they feel very scattered and dragging the show's pacing incredibly down. Some flashbacks are really interesting and others not so much. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't understand what's going on until the final two episodes where you finally get, okay, I was understanding that the flashbacks were probably going there, but I still have tons of questions. And, you know, that's again where a season two could go. But, you know, whether it's like Arrow or other shows like that that do use flashbacks, when you use flashbacks, you want it to tie to the world going right now in the present timeline. The flashbacks here sometimes do that and sometimes have no purpose whatsoever, but just to tell the origin story of how certain things occurred to certain heroes. And again, it's interesting at times, but man, do they pop up and just drag the pacing down. It was easily my least favorite storyline through the entire show, and it just killed it for me. Even then, again, they were a bit confusing, and it just didn't really need it to happen. For me, I think, again, the flashbacks, yes, Maybe they were actually needed. I just said they weren't, but maybe they actually were. But my biggest con to them being in here was they just, by the end, I was like, okay. Like, I feel like you could have just done one episode to really sum up the flashback or written it in there to a little bit of a better stance. Maybe done a middle episode that was just focused in on there to explain and describe certain things that maybe would help further the present. But I never felt like it did. The present storyline was the one that I was most invested in, and that was the one I wanted more time with, but on a screen runtime thing, I feel like it actually was the flashbacks that we got more of, sadly. But even again, even though I did like where the flashbacks ended up going, I just sat there going, you could have done one episode and this would have been flawless. With that one con out of the way, jumping into the pros, there are a lot to like about Jupiter's Legacy. First off, the performances are fabulous every single person really much brings this world to life and brings this family to life this is the one big element of it all that i actually really did appreciate and especially the way that josh plays this character of this father of and leader to pretty much all the other superheroes you see him as the utopian and believe it in every single second he just plays this role perfectly and while the makeup is a little bit hit or miss for the older versions of him it very much works for me and i dug it i dug his performance as this gritty olden and hardened superhero who has lived by this certain code that in a sense is now being talked about into the world public is should we break it or should we not and in this time of day do we need it anymore and i think that actually strikes back to our society as well and i found it to be very interesting in the way that it feels 
politically and in general relevant to today's time but also in general how it feels just mixed and twined inside this show into not the way that it's trying to preach something but in general try to touch on something that is feels real I've never really much read the comics the thing i really appreciate is how it felt like a comic book show they ripped it right out of the page but kept that dramatic element to it all even though again it is funny seeing people fly around in superhero costumes and the tights and the undies and the capes and all that sorts of nature but even again showing the suits which are all freaking badass the powers in here are really intelligent and some of the fighting in here works wonders one of the earlier fight scenes is just fantastic and especially when it gets down to the final two episodes, which are hands down the best two episodes of the entire show, it actually won me over and I went, okay, give me a season two, improve on certain things, let's get into this. This is overall a darker, more dramatic show than I expected. It touches on deeper themes than I think it needed to, and I wish it would have dove into those themes more. Again, this is a really interesting family, and in overall, as a superhero story, this is a family drama in the middle of it all, and one that I was thoroughly invested in if it wasn't for the goddamn flashbacks. It gives me this lingering story that I'm overall invested in now, and it's in a family element that I found just absolutely incredible, especially within those last two episodes. The twists and the turns that it comes out to be maybe a bit predictable, I really dug. Hunter's Legacy Season 1 is a good first season. Not great, not terrible, but good. It could have been better, I think, if it would have helped with the flashbacks and really much the pacing of it all, maybe just doing one full episode of it. Maybe that episode would have felt dragged, but then the rest of the episodes would have felt more concurrent with what is going on, and we would have still gotten that whole world around mythology built around in Jupiter's legacy. I really love the characters in here. Almost each and every one of them is a little bit unique to their own right, and not one annoyed me. Each one I, I dug for the most part, and I wanted more of them, especially Walt. Walt's my favorite. But for me, I love the performances in here. I think they all bring it to life. It feels ripped right out of the comics from the powers to the suits, all that nature. It feels like a comic book in a good way and also in a dark way. And I dug that. I dug how it feels relevant to our world, how gritty it can also feel. And in general, just certain things that the show brings up in the family relationship and how important that is. Jupiter's Legacy is interesting because, again, if it wasn't for the flashbacks, I feel like I would have really liked the show or even maybe loved it. But what it did by the final two episodes was make me go, okay, I'm in. Let's see a season two. Let's see how you can improve it on. Touch on this world a little bit more and hopefully not do as many damn flashbacks. Again, I'm not versed in the comic books, so if they did a ton of flashbacks in the comic books, I am sorry. I just don't think it worked for this adaption overall. But still, I would recommend watching it. The biggest thing is it's going to take its time to sink you in because just like me, if I didn't have to review this, it probably would have taken me a couple more days to even maybe a month to actually finish and not binge within a couple of days because I had to get this review out. So with all that said, guys, I'm going to give Jupiter's Legacy a B-. minus. Once again, guys, for clicking on this, you guys are seriously all the best. Make sure to comment down below your guys' thoughts on Jupiter's Legacy. So interested to hear your guys' ones on this. I don't know if I'm in the more minority. I don't know if I'm in, like everyone agrees with me. We're definitely going to find out very soon. But also make sure to head on over to Sam Tron Films on how to see films early. And of course, it's a big thank you to you and a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Because without you, I won't be able to do this. And if you want to help me support me over on Patreon, the link is down below. I do a ton of fun things over there and I have tons of fun plans for it. And I hope to have you guys over there as well. And if you want some t-shirts, shirts that have my face on it or my logo that also support the channel they'll also be down there so of course until next time guys stay classy